in the Bible that all scripture is given by the Holy Spirit. So who gave the men the idea to write this Bible? God! The Holy Spirit. See? Who does the Bible say inspired the scriptures? See there at the end it says, God spoke and they were moved by what? Right here, number one, the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit inspired uh -oh. over 40 different men to write the Bible. And guess what? They all wrote about the same thing. Now, say, business, we all take a trip to Six Flags, right? And I ask each of you to write a report. Do you think every single one of you guys' report will be the same exact story? Yes! Okay. No. no! Who says yes? Who says no? Yeah, let me know. Because you guys will have all different kinds of perspectives. You may have gone a ride that I didn't go on. Or you may have had experience, you maybe was sick and didn't have fun. And you maybe went and had a good time. But the Bible is not like that. That's how you know that it's true because you had 40 different people write the Bible. But guess what? It never contradicts itself and everybody is saying the same thing. So tonight, when you go home, I want you guys to use this crossword puzzle. Is that what it is? Or find the words? And I want you to find all of these words tonight, okay? You got me? Yes, sir. Number two. How can you know for yourself that the Bible is true? Because God said so. Because God said so? How do you know it's true? What does that, anybody can read that answer right there? Who can read that answer for me? You, read. Number two, under number two.
Step down. Remember the angels told the shepherds? So all throughout the Bible, it tells things that's going to happen in the future. Even in Matthew, it tells about how there is going to be earthquakes and hurricanes. Do we have hurricanes and storms now? Yes. Do we have wars and things now? Yes. And guess what else? Guess who told us that's going to happen? God. All right. That's in the Bible. Okay. So everybody seems to do a cross or something? What? I want you guys to do that in your spare time, okay? Now, the Bible is divided into how, how many parts? Two. Two parts. What two parts are there? The Old Testament and the New Testament. What testament has uh, Deuteronomy? Oh, I know. What? Old Testament. Yeah. What about uh, Luke? What about, let me see if I can get y'all, Obadiah. Oh, um, Old Testament. Old Testament? You sure about that? No. New Testament. Why are you changing your mind? <laughs> <laughs> you got to stay with your first thought. Uh, what about yeah. Timothy? Third Testament. What's it work? Third Testament. It's the whole thing. <laughs> the new one. Uh, you sure? Oh. <laughs> Don't let nobody trick you. You stand on what you believe. And the reason ain't the third testament. <laughs> All right. Let's go to number four. So here we have a puzzle on page four. If you look, it says. These prophecies were written in the Old Testament before Jesus came. So what testament told about when Jesus walked the earth? The New Testament. Man, you're smart, man. The New Testament talks about when Jesus walked the earth and the disciples. The Old Testament talks about Adam and Eve, the flood, Abraham, and, and characters like that. And Noah. Good job, man. Good job. So, tonight, when you go home, I want y'all to decode this. This is very important. This is a very important part of the puzzle of the map. We have to decode this. So, if you look to the left, A stands for what? Equal what? Apple. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. So, let's do the first one. Let's see if we can pick out the first one. So, the first one says P. P is what? P. No, P. Look on your, look on your page. P equals what? P equals B. All right? A equals what? Okay. Okay. W equals what? O R. R. So we got B O R. Okay. Y equals what? A. A. So what word is that? Born. 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 Okay. Somebody stand with me. Stand with me. Born. Okay. What's E? Who said they don't get it? I. 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 Look on the sign. I. See right here. These letters equal something. It's going to spell out something. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. So, you know, you have E right there. E equals I. See, it's going to spell a letter, a word right there. So now we have born, and what's what? In. In. So now what two words do we have? Born in. Born in. Who can guess the thing what that last word is? Born in. No, born in. The last word. You got one more word to pick up. Ah, born in Bethlehem. I'm not giving y'all no more. You got to figure out the rest on your own, okay? <laughs> so go back tonight or later on the day, and I want you to crack this code for me, okay? Okay. Now, number four. Does the Bible teach about scientific things that will help to prove it's true? What do you think your answer is? Does the Bible teach about science? No. No? no. Yes. Yes? No. What do you yes. say? Yes. Yes? What, why you say, I say yes? no? Huh? I say no. Because science is like how to be a scientist. Let's look in our maps. Let's look in our maps. Check this out. Fact number six. You see right here. It said for thousands of years, people thought the earth was what? Flat. Is the earth flat? No. What's that right there in the back of the room? I see me. No. Oh. <laughs> Who do you got? You guys know who discovered America? 
But who, who the teachers told us to go Anybody know a book that can do that? No. There's no book. Only the Bible can do that. 
Only the Bible could do that. I could be a bad person, but once I read this, I can turn into a what? A good person. So, there's a story here. How many people know what a cannibal is? Ooh. What's a cannibal? A person that eats another person. People that eat other people. You know those kind of people exist in this world? No. It's people that kill people and eat them. So, this story, this story in, this, in this lesson was about this man that went to an island with all these cannibals. And the cannibals were reading the what? Bible. They were reading the Bible. And so this man was laughing at him. Like, oh, <laughs> you crazy jokers. You reading the Bible? You are eating. That thing ain't true. And the cannibal said to him, said, hey, you better be glad I'm reading the Bible because if you wasn't, you would have been for dinner tonight. <laughs> so that's showing you that this Bible transformed them because once he read this, he knew that you're not supposed to eat nobody. You're not supposed to kill nobody. So if he wasn't for him reading the Bible, that guy that was laughing at him would have been Thanksgiving dinner. So lucky for him that that guy was reading the Bible because the Bible transformed you. This is the only book on earth that can transform you. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.17, right here, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? The new creation. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Oh, look, we got another puzzle at the bottom. An atheist? Who knows what an atheist is? I can't see it. What's an atheist? We can't see it. Something that doesn't believe in God. Here, this page right here. See, see the guy at the bottom? I can't see it. Yes. This is how the face will look. I want you guys to figure out that answer at the bottom. Okay? Number seven. Stay with me. Number seven. Turn the page. Turn the page. When we accept the Bible as God's word, can we know things that others are still searching for? Yes. Because guess what? I can't find a treasure unless I have the what? Bible. So if I don't have the map, I can't find a treasure. So you think if there was a treasure in this room, say for instance, I hid some money in this room. And I gave you the map. <coughs> and I didn't have a map. But you had the map to get the treasure. Who do you think would find the treasure first? The person with the map. The person with the map. So the ultimate treasure is going to where? God. If you look on the front page, you'll see that golden city. That's the ultimate goal. That's the treasure we're trying to find, boys and girls. We cannot find this city unless we read the word. Bible. The Bible, a.k.a. the map. This map will lead us to the Golden City. We can't get to the Golden City without reading the map. So I want you guys to ask your parents, for those of you that can't read that good, every night, every morning, to read you something from the map, from the Holy Bible. Because you guys want to get to the city, right? Yes. Yes, I know I do. Okay, here we go. So, how many days did it take for the earth to be created? For the whole Seven everything days. in the earth to be created? Seven days. It took millions of years, right? No. It didn't take millions of years? It only took six days. Six days. I thought the scientists told us it took millions of days. Oh, okay, then they're wrong. No, it only took six days. So where, where you get that from? The Bible. The Bible. Where? This is 
I got. Okay, you got two assignments, right? First, I want you to tell me how many books are in the Old Testament, right? How many in the New? I want you to come back and find me and give me that. Then I want you all to come back and tell me what was created each day of the week, okay? Each day. And it got to be correct, okay? I want you all to find out. All right. Here we go. So, it says, what things can we know? God created the world and all living things in just how many days? Six days. Six days, right? It didn't take millions of years for man to evolve. You ever heard of evolution? Anybody ever heard of evolution? Evolution is not real. So I don't care what teachers may say, we did not come from monkeys, right? No. We did not come from a big bang and everything blew up and then we just had trees and moon and stars, right? God created everything. So I don't want you guys to be afraid to step up and speak up if someone says, yeah, you came from a monkey. I want you to say no. In Genesis, I didn't, it does not say that, right? Because we know that the Bible is true, right? How many things in the Bible is true? Everything. Everything. All the things are true in the Bible. Everything. Who inspired God to write the Bible? The Holy Spirit. How many guys wrote the Bible? Forty. Forty. How many books in the Bible total? Sixty-six. Okay, you guys are paying attention. All right, here we go. We almost done. Are you willing for God to teach you? One day on the porch, Nick was watching his grandfather read the Bible. Grandpa, he said, I see you read the Bible every day. Haven't you read it all by now? Yes, many times, Grandpa answered. Curious, Nick asked, why do you keep reading it? Don't you remember what you read? Grandpa said, not all of it. Besides, we still need to read the Bible every day. Why do you think I need to read the Bible every day? Why do you think I need to read the Bible every day? Because he's trying to go to heaven. And what if I miss something? You ever read, how many people watch the movie more than one time? Or you watch it like the second time or third time you see something you didn't see before? Yeah. And you're like, oh, I didn't see that the first time. You know what? Now I know. That's like me. I like watching Star Wars and stuff like that. Yeah. And sometimes I might see something I didn't see before. I'm like, oh, now I see. Now I know what's going on. It's the same thing with the Bible. A lot of times you read the Bible, and the more and more you read it, the more things get revealed to you. And then you keep reading it, and now you're like, oh, now I understand it. So that's what this brother did. So he says, that's when Grandpa asked, something very strange indeed. You see that cold basket? Take it to the well and fill it with water. Then bring it back here as fast as you can. It was the basket Grandpa always used to carry cold from the heating stove inside the house. Nick saw that inside the basket was filthy from coal dust. Nick picked up the basket, ran to the well, put water in it, and quickly carried it to Grandpa. By the time he got back, it was nearly empty. Most of the water did what? It spilled out. And small cracks in the basket. Try it again, Nick, Grandpa urged. Determined, Nick ran back to the pump, filled the basket with water, and the same thing happened again. Frustrated, Grandpa said, this is a waste of time. The water just runs out. That's true, Grandpa, but look at the basket again. Nick gazed in the cold basket and realized the inside was sparkling clean. Grandpa explained, you see, when you fill your minds with God's word, we don't always remember everything we read, but it cleans our hearts as it runs through us. So, that little story, he was going back and forth, filling up the basket. It was all dirty and nasty, and he thought he was wasting the water out, but it ended up cleaning the pot. That's how this roadmap works. If we keep reading it and reading it, we'll get more clues and we'll get better equipped to make it to work. Because that's the ultimate goal. Okay? Are we ready to do the test at the back? Or are you doing the test? Okay? Okay, here's the test. Let's go. Number one. You ready? Oh, the Bible is true. The whole The whole The whole Bible. Thousands of years ago,
ago, God's word said the earth was what? Round. Was round. Yeah. We can trust the prophecies in God's word what? Most of the time, right? All the time. All the time. The greatest discovery ever is that what? Which one answer y'all got? God's word is true and he loves us. Number five. If I believe God's word, which things do I know are true? Which things are false? So I want y'all to tell me T or F. God created the world in six days. Yes. True. 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 What everybody gotta agree? What everybody say? True. All right. If we evolve into we evolve into people over millions of years. What everybody say? No one knew when Jesus would be born. False. False, okay. The Bible prophets told when Jesus would be born. True. True. God tells us his secrets through the prophets. False. True. True. Okay, we can never know whether there really was a flood. True. It's false. We can know, right? Because it's in the Bible. We said everything in the Bible is true, right? Yay. And who was around when the flood happened? No. No. no! From God's words, oh yeah, the greatest proof that the Bible is true is that it changes people's lives. True. true. This is the only book that can transform. The word of God will stand forever and we can trust it. True. True. <laughs> the Bible has how many books in it? Six, 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 six. How many people wrote the Bible? Five. Five. And back. All the length of the prophecies in the Bible about Jesus came true. How many know that? 125. Man, you've been studying. Okay, here we go. What new thing have you discovered in this lesson? Um, Alright, what you got? The Bible will change you. The Bible will change you? Uh, anybody else? What you learned? What you learned today that you didn't know? That's what he wanted to do. Hey! Okay. Uh, what you learned today? Y'all know what you learned. You know what you learned today? You do everything. There you go. What you got? Everybody should have learned. Okay, what about what does the Bible stand for again? 